Hey there, I wanted to give you a message of hope and encouragement today. I want to share with you my own personal story on how I got started in music. It may surprise you a little bit, it might not be what you think, but if any of you out there are feeling inadequate or like you can't do something, I want you to know that you can. Who knows, the story of someone else might surprise you. I'm a Yamaha piano artist, a violinist, composer, and recording artist. I released five albums in the last 10 years. My albums have won multiple awards. I've also performed in some pretty cool places, including the middle of a rainforest on a pirate ship, <laughs> Carnegie Hall, concert halls with symphonies. I just surpassed two million views on my YouTube channel, and I have a combined half billion streams on Pandora and Spotify. It's been pretty cool. <laughs> I'm also a wife to an amazing man who is my business partner and cinematographer, and we have three kids together that we raise and we also support our family 100% from my music career. You should know though that none of this was my plan. <laughs> I went to college to become a concert pianist. If you would have told me in college that one day I would be making a career off of being a composer, I would have thought you were absolutely crazy. So I grew up being classically trained in piano and violin. I started them both when I was five. I started playing in orchestras in the second grade. I did solo and ensemble festivals and competitions all the way through high school and then eventually went to college. I mean, my absolute dream. I wanted to become a concert pianist. I even told my parents from a young age, someday I want to be a concert pianist. I just had a lot of doubts from people that I could do it. But once I got to college, I worked really hard. I practiced about eight hours a day. One of the highlights for me was learning a very difficult piano concerto and entering the university concerto competition. And the prize for winning this competition was to get to perform with the university orchestra, which in my mind was one step closer to becoming a concert pianist. After six months of hardcore training on the concerto and competing, I ended up placing second, and so I didn't win. Yeah, it was definitely a letdown for me. I was pretty sad afterwards, and I definitely had some feelings of inadequacies and like, wow, I wasn't good enough. The judges didn't think I was good enough. My very kind piano professor came up to me and reminded me that, you know, only about 1% of the top pianists go on to be concert pianists and they are perfect performers. And I knew that I wasn't a perfect performer and I knew that I even struggled sometimes with stage fright. And I remember him trying to let me down a little bit easy and try to encourage me in another direction. Several times during college I had people come up to me and ask me if I also composed music as well as performed. And it was just comical to me that they would ask me that because no, I'm a classical performer, I perform music, I don't write music. I'd even tried a couple times to sit down and, and write something and it was just beyond my mind of how to figure out from scratch how to create something. It wasn't something that I ever wanted to do or concentrated on. So after I graduated from college, I taught piano for a few years. I performed in several orchestras, and I also performed background music in hotel lobbies, none of which paid bills or even paid me remotely enough to sustain a living expense, and so of course I was working other jobs as well. I never quite knew where I fit in with music. It was about five years after I graduated from college where I had actually moved home with my family, and we all went to a Christmas concert from the amazing and lovely duo Eric Tingstad and Nancy Rumble, whom I actually am friends with now, but at the time I had just grown up listening to their music. But that night was a turning point for me and something magical happened that night. I remember sitting in the concert and just being mesmerized and listening to the beautiful music. Um, here I'd been playing Rachmaninoff and Chopin and all these incredibly difficult composers and yeah, I was listening to a guitar and an oboe, and it was so beautiful, and I just remember sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I, I want to do this. I want to create music, and I want to make people feel how this is making me feel. It was so inspiring, I, I, it was pivotal. I remember all the way home from the concert, I was in the back of the car just thinking about that concert and how it made me feel. And when we got home that evening, after everyone else had gone to bed, 
I went on to my mom's piano with candlelights and Christmas lights and thoughts of music came pouring into my mind. I actually wrote my first song that evening and it was as if the thoughts were just coming into my mind faster than I could get them out. I know that there's no possible way I, that was me. It was definitely divine inspiration from above helping me to do this. And I know God was just telling me, you have it within you to do this and I'm gonna show you that you do. And yeah, that night I wrote my first song and then the next day I wrote another song. Eventually I had composed enough songs where friends and family were asking me to record the songs and burn them to a CD so that they could listen to them. And my husband figured out how to run a cable from my keyboard to my computer so I could record my songs. These are super amateur humble recordings. And eventually I went into a studio and recorded parts for everything. But that was how my first CD was born, three and a half years after I wrote my very first song. And here I am 10 years later with five albums out. And I already told you my whole background with music now as I do it. I feel like I finally found my place in music. I wanted to be a concert pianist and I feel like I'm doing that, but I'm doing it my own way. And it's a way that is freeing for me. I think that so many of us have this idea of what success is. It's like, it's this thing and it's what this person over here is doing or this person and we look at them and we think like, okay, if I'm gonna be successful, I've got to do what they're doing. I don't think it's ever too late to pursue your dreams and I don't think you should listen to anyone who tells you otherwise. I don't think that you should listen to anyone who tells you that your dreams are too big. I think you should listen to the fire within yourself and go for your dreams. And you make it happen for yourself. I truly, truly believe that you can do whatever you put your mind to if you work hard enough. I believe in you.